Well, good morning and welcome to Sunday morning service. Let's stand for opening prayer, please. Brother Judd, open us in prayer, please. Come forward and lead us in song. Thank you, Brother Stephen. Good morning. Appreciate that. Uh, Derek, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Sorry we missed you on Wednesday. All right, I think your song is 570, is that right? All right, great. Every, everybody turn over to 570 if you would. 570, I've anchored in Jesus. Upon life's boundless ocean where mighty billows roll, I fix my hope in Jesus, blessed anchor of my soul. When trials fierce assail me as storms are gathering o'er, I rest upon His mercy and trust Him more. I've anchored in Jesus, from the feeling of the brave. I've anchored in Jesus, I fear no wind or wave. I've anchored in Jesus, for he hath power to save. I've anchored in the rock of ages. He keeps my soul from evil and gives me blessed peace. His voice has stilled the waters and bid their tumult cease. My pilot and deliverer, to him I all confide. For always when I need him, he's at my side. I've anchored in Jesus, the storms of life all brave, amen. I've anchored in Jesus, I fear no wind nor wave. I've anchored in Jesus, for he hath power to save. I've anchored in the rock of ages. He is my friend and savior, in him my anchor's cast. He drives away my sorrows and shields me from the blast. By faith I'm looking upward beyond life's troubled sea. Amen. There I behold a haven prepared for me. I've anchored in Jesus, the storms of life all brave. I've anchored in Jesus, I fear no wind or wave. I've anchored in Jesus, for he hath power to save. I've anchored in the rock of ages. Amen. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Appreciate that song selection. Praise God. It's a good place to be anchored tonight and this morning. And all the days of our life, praise the Lord. Well, we missed another birthday on Wednesday. Dirk Van de Viever. Would you stand up, sir? <laughs> I found, about, found out about you late, brother, but we're here for you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Amen. Praise God. So I, I knew I knew uh, I knew that Dirk uh, I knew that there was a lot of talent in in the congregation. I never knew Dirk spoke so many languages. How many do you speak, brother? Uh, five. Five. Praise God. I, wonderful. Praise the Lord. Wow. I, I almost speak one. You know what I mean? <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. So so Dirk, what song would you have us to sing this morning? Seventy five. Praise God. This is my father's world. Seventy five. 
This is my father's world. <clears throat> this is my father's world, and to my listening ears, all nature sings and round me rings the music of the spheres. This is my father's world. I rest me in the thought of rocks and trees, of skies and seas. His hand a wonders wrong. This is my father's world. The birds their carols raise, the morning white, the lily white, declare their maker's praise. This is my father's world, he shines in all that's fair, in the rustling grass I hear him pass he speaks to me everywhere this is my father's world oh let me ne'er forget that though the wrong seems all so strong God is the ruler yet this is my father's world the battle is not done. Jesus, who died, shall be satisfied, and earth and heaven be one. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Appreciate that good song. Praise God. Jesus will be satisfied. <laughs> Amen. As, uh, as Brother Doug reminded us again this morning, uh, he is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Through, through Jesus. All should come to repentance. Praise God. All right, we have one more. I'm sorry, we have one more birthday. Uh, Thursday? Friday? Jason Smith. Thursday. Thursday. Uh, 70, oh, oh, 75? Oh, yeah, again? Praise God. I like that. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Amen. Praise God. Well, I don't know if you heard that request, but he wants us to sing 75. Is that right? 75. Praise God. We're going to do it again. Amen. <laughs> Say again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Dirk and sing it in Dutch. Praise God. All right, 75. Here we go again. This is my father's world, and to my listening ears, all nature sings and round me rings the music of the spheres. This is my father's world. I rest me in the thought of rocks and trees, of skies and seas. His hand a wonders wrong. This is my father's world. The birds their carols raise. The morning. Light the lily white, declare their maker's praise. This is my father's world, he shines in all that's fair. In the rustling grass, I hear him pass, he speaks to me everywhere. This is my father's world. Oh, let me ne'er forget that though the wrong seems off so strong, God is the ruler yet. This is my father's world. The battle is not done. Jesus, 
who died shall be satisfied, and earth and heaven be one. Now, did I miss here? No, I, I told you the wrong one. It's 85. 85! <laughs> well, far be it for me to deny anyone on, on their near birthday. 85, amazing grace, praise God. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found, was blind, but now I see. T'was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear, the hour I first believed. The Lord has promised good to me his word my hope secures it will my shield and portion be as long as life endures through many dangers toils and snares amen we have already come, tis grace hath brought us safe thus far, and grace will lead us home. When we've been there ten thousand years, bright shining as the We've no less days to sing God's praise than when we first begun. Praise God, praise God. Praise God, 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 praise God. Amen. 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 Well, we want to go to prayer. We always have lots to pray for. We want to pray for Brother Ledger as he brings a message this morning. We want to continue to pray for Brother Wooten and all that he has to do. And for Brother Wooten's children, uh, Autumn and Benny. They need the Lord's prayers. They need the Lord to help them. And uh, we want to continue to pray for Brother Jerome, all he has to do. And for his service tonight, he's going to preach tonight. I want to continue to pray for each one here that uh, has a job or, you know, works on the grounds. Everything that uh, has to happen here takes a lot of people to do it. So everything's important from doing the trash to sweeping the floor, doing the pots and pans to, to everything that's done here. And we're to do our job. The Bible says it's unto the Lord. Yes. And it's a lot easier and more purposeful when we do do it unto the Lord instead of drudgery. So try to remember that this week, you know, that whatever you're doing here on the grounds, you're doing it for the Lord and unto the Lord. Amen. Does anybody have a prayer request this morning? Judd? Amen. Amen. Good, good request. Anybody? Hey, guys. All right. All right.
Chris. All right, for Chris. Okay. For Chris's mom. <coughs> Both of you? Pardon? Both of you are having a procedure? Yep. Okay. We want to uh, pray for the, the camp at Sun City. Brother and Sister Ledger went up Thursday, and uh, a bunch of us went up Friday. And it, it was wonderful. It was really a wonderful camp. It was a good message. It was, uh, you know, good singing. And, and uh, the Lord moved there. It was wonderful to see two young boys go to the altar, about 8 and 10, and, you know, to go there and dedicate their lives to the Lord, you know. And then another woman who was in her 30s had, was having trouble, but she knew that the answer was the Lord. And she got through that night and testified about it afterwards. It was a, it was a good season that we went there in the Lord, and we had good company going up and back. We enjoyed ourselves. So we thank the Lord for that and ask the Lord that he continue to be, his presence be at the Sun City Camp. Anybody else? Yes, let's pray for the mission. Yes. Let's pray for the mission Amen, absolutely. Amen. 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 Chris? Jack For Jack, yes. Absolutely. Oh, we want to pray for unsaved loved ones too. We all have unsaved loved ones. We want to pray for that. Hmm? Thank you, Matt. Thank you. I'll take it. All right, let's stand for prayer. Who would like prayer? I know I would today. Brother Doug, lead us in prayer, please. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Jesus. And yet, yes, Lord. Mine and all for our souls. Lord, Lord, Lord. Yes, each request you made today, Lord. Yes, Jesus, let your Lord be upon him, Lord. Yes, Lord God. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Lord God. Yes, Jesus. 
Lord, we have a family member that are lost and are done. Yes, Lord. No doubt they're thirsty and hungry, dear Lord, to see them saved. And yes, pray Lord. That you would help them, Father, to be encouraged. Yes, you. Lord. We do pray for Son City. We pray yes, for Jesus. Every glorious day today, Father, let the Holy Ghost be yes, there. We pray in a magnanimous way. Father, we just pray, give them a good day. Yes, we Jesus. Thank you again, dear Lord. Yes, Lord. Grace and mercy to each of us. Yes, Lord. For that it's new. Praise God for Yes. We just ask you. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' blessed name, I pray. Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. 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 All right, the ushers are coming forward, and we'll take the morning offering, which goes towards the expenses of the mission. All right, it's time to open up our hearts and see what the Lord has for each one of us this morning through Brother Ledger. Lord bless. For I know whom I have believed, and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which he has committed. We've committed unto him against that day. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, I'd like us to uh, open our Bibles to Matthew chapter 21 this morning. Matthew 21. And we're going to begin our reading today at verse number 12. Matthew 21, 12. Give everybody a chance to find it. And we still have a couple of Bibles left if somebody needs a large print Bible. See my wife or I and give us your name. <coughs> Amen. Matthew 21, 12. 
And Jesus went into the temple of God and cast out all them that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves. And he said unto them, It is written, My house shall be called the house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. And the blind and the lame came to him in the temple, and he healed them. And when the chief priests and scribes saw the wonderful things that he did, and the children crying in the temple, and saying, Hosanna to the son of David, they were sore displeased. And said to him, Hearest thou what these say? Jesus said unto them, Yea, have you never read out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, thou hast perfected praise? And he left them and went out of the city into Bethany and lodged there. Our Father, we thank you for your word this morning. We appreciate your mercies that you ever gave it to us. And now we pray you'd help us to preach today. And that you'd please turn hearts and minds to the things of God. And touch and anoint us with thy presence and speak to every person here. For your grace will thank thee in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. The Bible says that everything that was made was made by Jesus. There was not anything made that wasn't made that he didn't make. So God made all things. But there were three special things that God made that I'd like to talk about this morning. And the first one is God's house. And the second one is God's day. And the third one is God's book. You see, God has a special, special house just for him. When Jesus was uh, talking here and quoting, he was quoting from Isaiah 56, 7. He said, my house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. That was the prophet Isaiah prophesying that not just the Jews, but everybody in the whole world could pray to God. And so all people could worship the Lord. Now in Mongolia today, many of the people there still worship idols. Oftentimes they have a little statue in the corner of their home on a little triangular table called the God table. On the table sits the little God. He's about that tall. And there's some incense around him and some other little things that they have there. And um, the people worship that little God. But uh, also they have uh, temples, all kinds of temples. They have... Uh, the Mongolian original temples, and then they have the Buddhist temples. And inside these temples, they have these grotesque statues uh, in human form. When some of them have snakes for arms and uh, hooves for feet, and each one of them represents something, some aspect of life. Well, they have the god of fertility and they have the God of rain, and they have the God of good fortune, and the God of good health, and on and on and on it goes. There's a God for everything. Now the Christians worship the living God who created all things. He is the one that forgave us of all our past sins. And He is the one that delivers us from the power of sin so that we no longer have to serve sin. He has broken the chains of sin that bind us, so we are no longer slaves to our sins. This is the living God revealed to us in the Bible. He is almighty, he is all-powerful, and he's able to keep his redeemed people safe from evil and from the evil one. So Christians constructed buildings just for the purpose of worshiping Him, of praising Him, and telling others about Him, and instructing one another in the way that they should live the Christian life. Well, what a wonderful God that we serve. We invite all non-believers to come to our chapel, to our church, and hear about our Savior. His name is Jesus. 
Yea, the Lord said, compel them to come in. And that's why Christians built the Fort Myers Rescue Mission. Set up this kind of place where people would be obligated to come to church because they partake of the, far, the facilities that are here. Compel them to come in. And so people who live here must come to church. Since the building is dedicated, would you please stop clapping? I appreciate it. Thank you. It's distracting. Since the building is dedicated to God, it pains us Christians when people are irreverent in here. Now, I recognize that we have to use the building for accountability. We use the building for roll call and those kind of things. And, and that, that bothers us. We wish that wasn't the case. We wish there was some other way we could do that, but that's the way things are. But this is still God's house. Amen. And so we want people to be reverent in God's house. Now, I just read a recent statistic from Pew Research. Pew Research they said that uh, 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 10 years ago, uh, I believe it was 17% of all Americans said they didn't have any religion at all. None. Now that's up to 23%. So those statistics tell me that about one-fourth of us that are in here don't have any religion. Don't believe anything. And maybe they have a little smattering of this and that and the other thing and a sort of a religious philosophy, but nothing really uh, concrete, not like a, a Buddhist or a Methodist or, a, or, or something like that. But just a, just a nothing, none of the above. And so it's, people are irreverent in God's house. It's kind of like the tourists that visit the idol temple in Mongolia. Well, they go in there, you know, and they're standing there taking selfies of themselves with these monstrous figures. And uh, they laugh at the gods and take photos of them. And um, when unbelievers come into this chapel, they oftentimes act the same way. If we didn't forbid it, people would be on their phones right now totally irreverent to what's going on in here. Not to mention those that are hiding that novel in the book they're now reading. Right in the Bible, they got a little novel opened up in there and they're reading so they don't have to listen to the preaching. Jesus said in this passage we read that the Jews had made the house of God into a den of thieves. Now what in the world was he talking about? Well, what was happening was is people were instructed by the Lord through Moses to bring sacrifices to the temple, offer the sacrifices, such as a lamb or a goat, and uh, offer the sacrifices to, the, to, to God in behalf of their families and themselves. And in these modern times that Jesus is now living in, People traveled a long distance to go to the temple. And so they didn't bring animals with them all the time. They brought money. And so they would go to the temple and they would want to buy a sacrifice so that they could offer it for their family. Well, uh, the Jews, uh, the, the money of the day was Roman currency. And so everybody used Roman currency. But when you got to the temple, they didn't allow Roman currency to be used in the temple. So they had these guys called money changers. They would take your Roman money and give you temple money. The problem was is they were ripping people off every time they made the exchange. And then when the people had the temple money and went to the guys that were selling the, the sacrifices, they overcharged them again. And so Jesus was pretty upset with that. And if you ever wondered why he took a whip and drove them all out of the temple, now you know why. So the people came to worship God. And the, the, uh, the Pharisees and the Sadducees had actually made a business out of the whole thing. You know... Our church is more than just a building. According to the scriptures, the Bible says that the true church is called the body of Christ. That means that it's a, it's a, a spiritual, mystical body, and Christ is the spiritual, mystical head of that, of that body. And so the Christian believers become his arms and his legs, his lips and his mouth, his eyes, and walk through the earth 
doing his work. And so we are referred to as the body of Christ, and that's all true believers that are in the church. Why, God said, I will inhabit them, I will live in them, and they indeed shall be temples of a holy God. Now that's the next step into this wonderful thing that God has done. Paul the Apostle said, our bodies are the temple of God. The Bible says the Holy Spirit will dwell in us and keep us from doing evil. Paul teaches us that a person that defies, defiles his temple, who dirties his temple, shall be destroyed by God. Is there pornography flowing into your temple? Or tobacco smoke? Or recreational drugs? Or alcohol? Is cursing and swearing flowing out of your temple? Jesus said, out of the heart, the mouth speaks. Is your heart full of bitterness or hatred or envy or lust? Is the love of money the God in your temple that you have set up, which is the temple God built for himself? Danger. God said he will destroy that temple. He'll destroy it more completely than the Romans destroyed the temple in Jerusalem. Yeah. Teared it all the way down to the ground and tore up the foundations. The Lord is pleased when we enter into his courts with thanksgiving and praise. Christians, I don't think there's anything that pleases God more than a thankful, grateful Christian. You know, when the children of Israel were in the wilderness wandering around for 40 years, they murmured and complained every single day about everything. Anything God did or didn't do, they complained about it. And then one day, that God led them out of the wilderness and over to the promised land. And he told them, he said, I'm going to march you around Jericho seven times in seven days. Actually, 14 times all together. And he said, I want you to do something. I don't want you to speak a word while you're marching. You know, I think that God was so pleased with the peace and quiet after 40 years of murmuring and complaining. Now, it sounds funny, but, you know, oh, Brother Ledger, I would never complain out loud to the Lord. God hears our hearts. He knows what's going on down inside of here. It has nothing to do with what comes out of our mouth. He, other people hear what comes out of our mouth, but He knows our heart. He knows really what we're talking about, what we're thinking about, what we're doing on the inside all the time. So the Lord is pleased when we enter into his courts with thanksgiving and praise. Christian, I have a question for you this morning. Are you keeping God's temple, which is your body, pure and holy? Is it really fit for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords to enter in and dwell there? I know there's a lot of people who say they're filled with the Holy Ghost. But from what I hear coming out of their mouth, I have very much doubt they're filled with any ghost that's holy. <laughs> then you can pray, and God will hear your prayers. The second thing that God claims is God's day. From the beginning of creation, the Lord declared a day of rest. Now, God said that on the seventh day he rested, but he didn't need to. He was setting an example for us. God never needs to rest, but he knew we did. Now, it was interesting. I read uh, several years ago that during the uh, height of the uh, communist empire in Russia, the Russians decided they were going to make a 10-day work week. They would just eliminate one weekend, and, you know, you'd have three weekends in a month instead of four. And so they thought, all right, we're going to get lots more production out of people by having a 10-day work week. It failed miserably. God said, God commanded one day in seven to rest and to worship Him. The New Testament Christians called this the Lord's Day. Sunday, the first day of the week, was the day that Jesus raised from the dead. 
The Holy Spirit was poured out upon the believers at Pentecost, the first day of the week. John was worshiping on the first day of the week when God gave him the vision of Jesus Christ and wrote the whole revelation, the last book of our Bible. Amen. All Christians worshiped the Lord on Sunday. Until 18, in the 1830s, there were some people called the Millerites who founded the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Now, I have, a, I have just one comment about that. Be very wary about new things in religious philosophy. Be very wary about it. Something that has been going on for a long, long time is worth paying attention to. But until 1830, this was never heard of that Christians worshipped on Saturday. The whole idea implies that the Christians were wrong about the day of worship for 19 centuries. But finally, they got it right in this modern day we're living in. Folks, those old folks of the, of the past had more spirituality in their little finger than most of us got in our whole bodies. Sunday, the Lord's Day, should be kept to stop working and rest. Buying and selling ends for a whole day. Read Nehemiah if you want to find out how he handled it. Some would say, well, Brother Ledger, now you know there are certain jobs that need to be done on Sunday. And that is very true. But does your job need to be done on Sunday? You know, I'm going to tell you what happened to me. I personally know four nurses. Four nurses who are Christians. Two of them made a decision. They were not going to work on Sunday. They're going to let somebody else have that double time, that overtime, and not work on Sunday. Two of them decided it was okay. The two that decided not to work on Sunday still have the victory today. The two that decided to go to work on Sunday are both backslid right now. Take it for what it's worth. Is your job need to be done on the Lord's day? Honor God's day and God will honor you. But folks, let's be consistent about our Christian experience. Don't say, I can't do my job at the mission on Sunday, and then at the same time run over to the flea market and buy a newspaper and sit down and have breakfast. You know, there was a restaurant owner one time, and uh, he talked to me. Uh, he, he, he talked to me, and he actually they were supplying food to the rescue mission. And uh, he talked to me and he said, you know, Brother Ledger, I really need your prayers. I wish you and Brother Schaefer would pray for me. My wife wants a divorce, and I'm really busted up about it. And I said, why don't you honor God and close your business on Sunday? And maybe the Lord will hear your prayer about your wife. He said, Brother Ledger, that's the busiest day of the whole week. The churches empty out and they flood into my restaurant on Sunday. I said, you've never seen us in there on Sunday. He said, well, that's true. The last thing that belongs to God is his word. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I not sin against thee. Somebody said that the Bible will keep you out of sin, and sin will keep you out of the Bible. Now, God's Word is, I mean, it, it's hard to call it, but it is such a stupendous miracle and such a stupendous blessing to the human race. Uh, it is just, uh, it just cannot be described. The Word of God, the Bible, contains 66 books and letters. The Bible says that God himself moved upon holy men to write it down. Over a period of 2,000 years, the records were carefully treasured and kept. From the time that Adam and Eve were created to the time that Jesus walked on the earth, the 2,000 years it was recorded, the Old Testament. God actually charged 
the Jews with the responsibility of keeping the word and keeping it accurate. I was uh, quite surprised one time my son was telling me, he's a computer guy, and he was saying that, he was telling me how email works. He said, when you send an email, all the letters, commas, spaces, and everything in the email add up to a number. And the computer that's sending the email adds that number up very quickly and sends that email to another computer and tells them what the number is. And if the computer on the other end, the number doesn't exactly match, it sends it back, says, wrong. Sends it again, sends it back, sends it again. That keeps going through the whole system until the, the email gets to you and it's been checked again. That's called sum checking. They add up all the, every character in there has a number and those numbers add up to a sum. That's sum checking. Well, I was glad I could inform my son that the Bible also is sum checked. When, the, when the, the Jews would write the Psalms, for example, they would count all the numbers and spaces and letters in the Psalm. It had to add up to a certain number. If it didn't add up, somebody made a mistake, and they went back and corrected it. Brothers and sisters, do you know that the God who made the Bible and gave it to us is able to keep the Bible clean and pure right down to the hour we're living in? It was kept by the Holy Spirit so that it, was remain, it remained pure and accurate, preserved to this present hour. We hold in our hands the Word of God. This is not contain the Word of God. This is the Word of God. This will, Bible will be what we are judged by at the judgment seat of Christ. Now, in these last days, we have had a proliferation of Bibles. I don't know how many versions and revisions there are now. Probably 50, maybe more. And they're not all alike. Well, which one is right, Brother Ledger? Well, there's a way to tell. The first one is right. Now, if you want to, if, let's say that you decide that you, you've got this book and you want to copyright it but it's copyrighted by somebody else already. So you can't copyright it yourself and sell it. So the, the law says that you must change 60% of the text to make it your own. So these companies start working very diligently to find words to substitute for the words to substitute for the words to substitute for the words. But God has kept the stream of truth pure. And that hour that we live in is the authorized King James Version. Now, King James had nothing to do with this Bible. He was, he was, a, he was terrible. His name's on it because he happened to be king when it was published. That's the only thing about it with him. But this book came to us. Oh, Brother Ledger, I can't read that old archaic language. There are about 75 archaic words in the Bible. There are even Bibles available that actually give you the other word underneath the archaic word. There are study helps that are available so you can read the word. Now, I'm going to tell you something. If you want a Bible that's all simplified so you can understand it, and you want to read childish baby story books, go ahead. I want the most accurate, accurate edition in English that is available, and this is it. Amen. You see, one of the problems with the modern translations are is they have been fooling with them. They're actually deceiving the public. And here's how they do it. When the King James was written, these guys were so reverent for God's word, they dare not change anything. If they didn't understand it, they left it obscure. That's why in the old King James, there's some things we don't understand. 
because it wasn't clear in the Greek and the Hebrew, so they left it the way it is. But modern translators have become interpreters, and they go ahead and interpret everything and tell you what it says. Oh, really? I'd really rather discover it for myself, thank you. So there we have it. God's three things. God's house, God's day, and God's word. The Bible says that these things are called the means of grace. They're the means of grace. That means these are things that Christian believers use to strengthen and help and encourage themselves in the Lord. These means of grace are given to us and they'll save our soul and those around us if we will partake of them. But if we don't, it's at our own peril. Now there's one voice with one voice. The Holy Spirit, the Bible, and the Christian church all declare one truth. That Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. And no man goeth unto God but by Him. There's a children's song I like. It says, there's a broad way, it's a bright way. It's a way that seemeth right, but it's a wrong way. For it leads you far from God. Travel God's way, it's the best way, it's the only tried and true way, and will lead to life eternal some sweet day. Get smart, take heart, trust God, and start for God. He will be there to meet you. We proved it to be true. Let's stand together. All right, let's bow our heads for prayer. I'm going to ask my wife to dismiss us in prayer today. Amen. All right, we'll start with roll call. Charles Parrish.